Good afternoon. I'm Mike Montecalvo along with Ruth Lee Polinski. Of course, the big breaking news today, it started this morning. Patriots owner Robert Kraft uh, is one of two dozen men named in a prostitution sting in Florida. Robert Kraft's name is not just well known around New England, but really around the world. He's one of the biggest businessmen in the world. He is worth $6.6 billion. He bought the Patriots for $172 million back in 1994. And Ruthie, I think people who are real rabid Patriots fans remember that they couldn't even sell out half the stadium before he brought, uh, bought the team. So I think he's brought a lot of popularity to him. And Robert Kraft was a storyline all season long, especially towards the end of the season um, b before the Patriots won their sixth Super Bowl. Robert Kraft's 25th anniversary of buying the organization was this year, so he's really been widely celebrated, not just in New England, but throughout the NFL. Robert, uh, Roger Goodell, the NFL commissioner, when I was in Atlanta at the Super Bowl, spoke at length about the wonderful things that Kraft has done for the Patriots, but also just for the league in general and for the communities that he's been a part of. So this is a very, very um, hot button issue, and Robert Kraft's name is one that draws a lot of attention very quickly. He's done so much for the community, and we're not just talking talking about for cancer research, but for so much. So the players and the coaches mm -hmm. really love him. He's been kind of a father figure to a lot of these players that Absolutely. didn't really have a big family life. Absolutely. And the players can't say enough good things about this man um, and the role that he's played, not just in their football lives, but in their personal lives. He's really taken a, a, a leadership and, and guidance role over players as big of names as Tom Brady. You know, he's just been, they've formed such a close relationship and, and Kraft's name is just typically associated with really wonderful things. So Ruthie, this is what makes this uh, more shocking when you hear police mm -hmm. say his name is on a list of 25 people who will face charges in connection to a crackdown on human trafficking and spa sex acts at the Orchards of Asia Day Spa. Police say Mr. Kraft is on video paying for a sex act inside the illicit massage parlor. What, is, what are the charges he could be facing? Yeah, so he's charged with two counts of soliciting prostitutes, which are two secondary misdemeanor charges. So it is important to appreciate the difference between a misdemeanor and um, a felony, of course. But uh, with the level of severity being relatively small, it's likely there's a warrant out for his arrest as we tape this. Um, you know, it's three o'clock. Um, he has not been arrested yet, but um, his name is out his, for a warrant for his arrest, but it's likely that he'll turn himself in um, just with the level of severity of, the, of these issues. Um, he has come out with a statement, um, or a spokesperson for Robert Kraft has come out with a statement um, denying anything illegal has happened in this situation. The NFL just released a statement a few minutes ago. The NFL is aware of the ongoing law enforcement matter and will continue to monitor developments. So I think it's important to talk about not just the fact that 25 names were released today that are involved in this, but 175 more names will be released at some point. Uh, ESPN's Adam, Sch Adam Schefter saying um, in a report that Robert Kraft's name is likely to not be the biggest name on this list. So um, that's interesting, I think, to point out. Um, but I do think I, I also wanted to point out that Robert Kraft's name being associated with this very, very, very serious issue um, was very quick. The Jupiter police were quick to comment on Kraft's name being mentioned. And I think that that um, may have had some tactic to it just to draw some widespread awareness to this horrible, terrible issue that's going on here in Florida. All right, let's talk about what you said about the NFL. So yeah. they have a code of conduct policy that the players and the owners and the coaches have to follow. If you read that, it is much higher for owners than mm -hmm. it is for the players, and that's something he's going to face. Yeah, that was something I was I was reading earlier, is that um, coaches and players are held to this certain standard. I think there is a, a very, there's a much stricter standard when you talk about the owners, and you look at some of the precedent of, you want yeah, we can get into this too, of some owners that have faced repercussions from the league. So Jim Mersey is the owner of the Indianapolis mm -hmm. Colts. He was pulled over for alleged uh, drunk driving and illicit drugs. He got uh, six game suspension and a 500000 dollar fine but Jerry Richardson who owned the Cal Carolina Panthers the NFL forced him to sell the team for conduct that was going on inside his uh, business uh, that, I don't know if we're going to get to that yeah. at that point but those are two owners two recent owners that faced disciplinary action by the league sure and and it's interesting because I think in New England especially people are quick to say that 
you know, Roger Goodell is not a fan of the Patriots and he's going to do anything he can to tear down this organization. I'm not so sure about that. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens, of course, if Kraft is, for whatever reason, forced directly or indirectly to kind of hand over the organization. His son, Jonathan Kraft, is right, waiting right there in line. So it would maybe, with Kraft, you know, in, in his 70s to be, maybe it would be a, a, a nice time to maybe take a, take a step back from the organization. But that's something that we'll keep an eye on in terms of how the league reprimands him. And of course, he's not found guilty yet. He's denying these allegations. So there are two sides of this story that um, we need to keep an eye on. All right, Kraft is uh, 77 years old. Obviously, he lives in Massachusetts. He does have a home in the Palm Beach uh, area. His wife uh, died in 2011. Uh, I think when you saw that with them wearing the pink and everything else that the team had done for breast cancer research, mm -hmm. that's just another reason why Robert Kraft has been, you know, such a prominent figure in not just the NFL, but really in all of sports. Yeah, it's, it's that. It's the, his dedication to cancer research, but he's really taken a um, a, a, a front face, if that's the correct terminology, in terms of um, incarceration reform, and um, he's really f formed some interesting relationships throughout the entire, not just in football, but with the NBA and with you know rap artists, and he's he's really become this social justice character to really make the world a better place. All right, Ruthie, you've been there when the team has come back for the celebrations, the yeah. wins, uh, and the losses. People are not just chanting Tom Brady's name; they're chanting Robert Kraft's name. Robert Kraft. We think the reaction is going to be at least locally here. Well, we have a reporter who's in Foxborough now getting reaction from fans. Kate Walsh is there, and she said that people are pretty much um, at large defending Robert Kraft here in this situation. Of course, um, with everything that he's accomplished here in New England, I think it's easy to just look at the football accomplishments. But if this is um, a real, if this, is, if this happened, this is serious, and um, this is something that needs to be taken seriously. Of course, I think it's, when you look at the football side of things, how this affects his legacy or what the Patriots have accomplished, does this diminish that in any way? Um, but I think for the most part at this time, until we have any sort of clear proof, if there is video surveillance, maybe once that's leaked, but really right now I think people here in New England are, are on the Patriots and Robert Kraft's side. But on the other side of that, I think people nationally um, are very passionate about your if you are if you know about the Patriots you're passionate about them whether you love them or you hate them there are no there's no in between right so um, if if you hate them you're very quick right now to continue to right. hate them but if you love them you're going to defend Robert Kraft all right, once again, this is not a football issue. Obviously, once again, just recapping, the owner of the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, this is still breaking. He is one of more than uh, two dozen men named in a prostitution sting as of right now in Florida. There is a warrant out for his arrest. He's 77 years old. He faces misdemeanor charges, including soliciting a prostitute. Obviously, we're on top of the story. We have a reporter in Foxborough. We're going to have uh, more information for you coming up tonight on Eyewitness News starting live at 5 on WPRI 12 and of course you can follow us on Facebook Live and on WPRI.com. We'll keep you up to date as soon as we get any information. Do we have any engagement from? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so someone's asking if Pats, like the, for the Pats fans that are not um, supporting Pratt, like will they forgive him? So mm. the question is if you couldn't hear it, will Pats fans uh, forgive him for this alleged act? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot that needs to be decided before I think we can look that far ahead. I think we need to take this one day at a time, in a lot of ways, in the Patriot way. You know, one game at a time, one day at a time. So I think we just kind of need to wait for all the facts to come out. There's still probably going to be a lot more information that comes out throughout the next, you know, day, if not hours, um, and then of course throughout the investigation, we need to see what kind of repercussions the Patriots are handed if they have to take away draft picks or if Kraft is forced to get, you know take a step back what, how does that affect you know the long-term effects of the Patriots organization I think that's going to affect the fan base and, and their outlook on Robert Kraft so as well. what I think is a little different between deflate gate let's just use that for example in this obviously draft picks were involved in that because that was a mm -hmm. football issue this is not if you go back right. to the Jim Ursay uh, situation the Colts were not uh, they didn't lose any draft picks on that it was cash and he was suspended. Obviously, right. the argument's going to be cash. Uh, what did I say? He was worth over $6.6 billion, so money's yeah. not going to be the same. It's just his reputation it that's is, uh, taking a hit. It, absolutely. And I think that that's kind of a, a discussion nationally is how the organization is going to 
uh, what repercussions, and, and we'll see what what kind of Roger Goodell and the, and the league decide. Sarah, do we have anything else? Um, yeah, so another person's asking, why do you think um, he got involved in all this? Like, why? Mm. I feel like that's yeah, so it, it, that's, you know, we, we were talking about this. Why did he get involved this. in this, allegedly get involved in this? We were talking about this in the newsroom. Um, you know, this is a man with all the money and power and respect, you know, in, in the world. He could have any anything he wants, um, per se. But... Yeah, I think that's you know that's what a lot of people are wondering at this moment in time. What what does he need in this building that he went to? What what did he need there that he couldn't have gotten elsewhere? And you know that's that's not really uh, anything that we. Can I think answer. the thing, Ruthie, too. Sometimes we put people on a pedestal. Yeah. And then when they're knocked down off their pedestal, they're found guilty of horrible crimes like Bill Cosby, for example. It's hard to believe that. It's somebody that you've sure. looked up to so many times, even somebody in your own life when you see something like that. So obviously Kraft was looked up to by many people. Uh, and just on that note, I did want to make sure that we commented on this. There are two kind of issues here, right? There's Robert Kraft and a prostitution sting. And then there's a whole other side of this issue that these women that were working there are part of a lar much larger sex trafficking, much grander scale. Uh, scandal. There's no real affiliation between Robert Kraft and that sex trafficking so, issue at this time. So there were ma many agencies working on that, including Homeland Security. And yes. we're, you know, we're just uh, peeling off the first layer of this entire story. Of there, course. there is more to come with that. Uh, okay, we're going to ha we'll have more for you tonight, starting live at five over on WPRI 12, and of course follow us on WPRI.com and on Facebook Live for Ruthie Polinsky. I'm Mike Montecalvo. Have a good afternoon.